Albert Einstein once said, two things are infinite, the universe and ReactOS's development cycle. Uh, yeah, as I'm sure we all probably know, ReactOS has been in a perpetual alpha state ever since development first began on it back in 1996. And the last time I made a video on this was back in 2020, and of course I used the $5 Windows 98 PC as a test subject, which just resulted in a complete and utter disaster. So today, we're going to be revisiting ReactOS for the first time in over four years to see how well it's doing. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So for those of you who don't know, ReactOS is a third party open source operating system that's designed to be binary compatible with Windows. It's a pretty massive undertaking, so it's understandable that we have not seen a, a final release of this yet, especially considering that the development staff is primarily comprised of volunteers. But anyways, today we're going to be checking out the latest version that isn't a nightly build, which is 0.4.14 from December 20. 2021. Now, ReactOS's minimum system requirements are 64 megabytes of RAM, though they do recommend 256, a Pentium processor or newer, 450 megabytes of free hard disk space, and a VGA compatible graphics card. This machine passes all of those requirements with flying colors. This is a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz. We've got 1.5 gigs of RAM, and I don't remember what the hard drive is, but it's certainly more than 450 megabytes. So, uh, we're just going to get started here. Uh, we're going to see if we can first of all get react os installed on here we'll see if it can get all of the drivers for it. we might have to do some of those manually we'll see and number three run some windows software including some games of course you guys know the half-life rule on this channel we'll try to get half-life running on here and uh yeah it should be pretty fun um i already have the disc inserted in the drive and we'll press any key to boot and of course it'll load all its files in and if you've never installed React OS before, this setup process, at least the initial portion here, will be pretty familiar to you if you have installed like Windows XP or a prior NT based version of Windows. So here we are, we'll choose English US, install or upgrade, acknowledge that this is an alpha, and we're going to see, okay, so we're going to, we could probably leave all of these at the default settings. Um, yeah, what's, you can actually install um, React OS on the original Xbox. That might be something worth doing. Because I've got five original Xboxes. They all have something wrong with them, though. Uh, so, yeah, I think we can just leave all this. That looks, uh, looks fine to me. So we'll accept these device settings um, for now. We can change the screen resolution and all that uh, later on if we want to. Now, this is a blank FAT32 partition on the drive, so we're just going to install it on that. And I guess we'll just format it even though it's already formatted. Uh, you can choose between FAT or better FS. I usually just do FAT just to keep things simple. And we'll press enter to have it format the disk. Uh, we'll install to the React OS folder, that's fine. And it will prepare to begin copying files, and then it will start copying files. That was perfect timing, wasn't it? All right, we're done with that. Uh, next up is where we want to install the bootloader. We'll go with the first option. You could even set this up on a floppy disk if you want to, but uh, first option's fine with me, and we'll restart. This time, we're not going to boot off the CD, so we'll let this time out. And we're going to start React OS. So you, it, it'll bring you to this menu uh, every single time that you start. So you can choose, you know, all these other modes here. Uh, but we'll just go with the standard React OS mode. All right, and here's where it starts detecting our hardware. So hopefully it will just detect everything and there'll be no issues. I mean, we've got the display working at the very least, so that's awesome. I do have the audio cable plugged into here, so if there is sound, we will hear that. Uh, if it's able to get our, our, our sound hardware detected. Now I've got two network adapters in here. I've got the one that's included on the motherboard and then I've also got a uh, PCI card. So if it can detect just one of those, um, I'll be happy. We're gonna run through the uh, setup wizard here. You know this, oh no, we do not have, yeah, our mouse is not working, but I think that might be just the cable because it was a little bit unplugged from the computer. So I'm gonna try to just restart. All right, thankfully that's all it was. Uh, so we'll hit next. Uh, it does give you a list of all the um, other projects that React OS has made use of. You can view the GPL if you really want to and read through all that. And then you choose between server and workstation, which is interesting that server is actually the default. 
and um, apparently, at least under description here, it says when you choose server, my pictures, my video, and my music are independent from my documents. When you choose workstation, they are in my documents. We're just going to choose workstation because I'm not going to be using this machine as a server. And we can customize our user and locale settings. I assume everything is going to be set to English uh, by default. I mean, that's what we chose in the first portion of the setup. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave that. Uh, keyboard layout should be English US, which is what it is. Uh, I don't want to restart. Uh, I didn't change anything, but okay, we'll hit next. We'll put in Michael. Oh, also, you probably didn't hear that so well, but it did make use of the PC speaker. So that's cool. Uh, hopefully we'll um, get our audio hardware set up here shortly. Computer name. Um, I don't know. Let's go with React OS uh, box maybe. And admin password. We're not going to bother putting that in. And we'll leave it in Pacific time. That's fine. And this is where we get to choose our theme. So you see, we've got four to select and we will go through all of these later on in the video. But I'm going to start with this Mizu one because I think it looks kind of nice. I think it all took effect. So, OK, we'll hit next and OK, network settings. We'll just do typical for now. Uh, this computer will not be part of a work group. Seems like there should be more lines on a lot of this stuff. And there we go. We've successfully completed setup. So it tells us to remove the disk from the drive. We're not going to do that because we're a bunch of rebels. Uh, and we'll, we will restart and just not boot from it. It does boot rather quickly on this computer, I got to say. So I did, did it already go through and detect. OK, here we go. Now it's going to start detecting all of our hardware. So ACPI power resource install driver automatically. Installation failed. Driver could not be found. All right. We are off to a, a wonderful start with that. Uh, but let's see. Let's run device manager here. OK, I guess device manager is not dev MGMT Um So open up my computer. Actually, we go to properties here. Hardware device manager. OK, here we go. It's got VGA compatible graphics card. It still does not have the sound set up. OK, there's multimedia audio device our two Ethernet controllers and three ACPI power resource all under other devices. So I think it came up with another thing here. Installation failed. OK, here's the ACPI power resource for the third time. So after this, it should come up with the audio or the network stuff. Multimedia auto device. So let's see if it's able to find a driver automatically. It's not. OK, let's try the Ethernet controller, the first one. Nope. All right. And the last one. No. OK, so um, we are going to have to get these drivers manually. All right. One burned CD later and we uh, hopefully will be ready to go. So uh, you may have been able to tell from when this computer was starting up, but this is a custom built machine. Well, I mean, you might not have known that uh, with an Intel desktop board. So I was able to find the driver CD for that desktop board. And we're going to see if all of these drivers are able to install properly. So we'll open up my computer and we'll go to our D865 uh driver disk here. And is there just a setup? There's EI setup.exe. Let's just try to run that maybe. I mean, there is like a drivers folder. Uh, but this way we get the Intel Express installer if uh, the window doesn't want to paint over the auto run splash screen there. Current system is not an Intel desktop board. OK, well, it is. Yeah, that might have something to do with React OS uh, screwing things up. I don't know. Application failed to initialize. Lovely. OK, so we can go into software here and driver. And OK, we'll start with audio. Um, Let's just run setup.exe. Looking good so far. All right, it could not copy a MIDI INF file. But did it install? I think it did. Well, it just closed, so maybe it didn't install properly. Um, hmm. Let's go back into Device Manager. We are going to probably have to restart the system at some point. Yeah, Multimedia Auto Device still does not show up. This, I believe. Oh, there we go. Yep, it found it. Installation complete. All right. Yeah, this I think under maybe not. I, I thought this dropped a folder in the start menu, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. OK, so we'll hit finish. That should under audio. Yep, we got it. So let's go to our sound properties here. And oh, look at that. The system froze up. That's <laughs> well, 
Uh, we got the driver installed. That's good news. But yeah, the system is... Uh, oh, that's that's me hitting control twice on my KVM switch, which is just going to switch to the other computer, which is not turned on. So, okay, control alt delete. Nope, I think the entire system just hung, which this did happen a few times, if I remember correctly, in the 98 PC video with React OS. So hopefully it's not a sign of what's to come. But I'm just going to do a force power off here. And yeah, Intel desktop boards. If you doubted that we had one in here, I mean, there you go. Uh, so, oh my gosh. Okay, an error occurred in Freeloader version 3.0. I'm guessing it did not like... It must have not liked the... Uh, the fact that we installed the driver. I wonder if we should have done it manually and not even installed the program. All right. Okay, so the first option is not working at all. We'll try to open it up in a debug mode. All right, React OS debug. Nope, uh, that's not working either. Uh, yeah, this is this is not looking good. Wonder if there's a way to roll back the driver. Now, it was funny, you notice the system did not hang until we tried to open up the sound panel, like from the system tray. Yeah, I think we're just screwed here. I think I'm gonna have to reinstall the OS. All right, we are back after hopefully the only reinstall of React OS that we'll have to do in this video. And we are just going to go into Device Manager and manually install the hardware drivers from there. So we'll start with the audio one again. We're just going to go into here, we'll reinstall driver, install from a specific location, and we apparently can't even choose manually, that's interesting, uh, but we're going to include, and this should be the folder that everything is in, so we'll select that, hit next, installation failed, okay, uh, this is where the right like driver audio analog what are these folders here pro v8 2019 win 2k xp let's try to run it is this the same thing as the auto run oh here pro network connections okay wired lan adapters install base driver installs or updates to, okay this is like an error message but it's just more letting you know it installs or updates drivers for intel pro adapters okay drivers for the network adapters were successfully installed you know something tells me they weren't um oh wait a second holy cow it actually was i stand corrected so we should be on the network i mean i've got this thing plugged into my ethernet switch over here so let's see ping google.com look at that all right at least we got one thing working so okay that's awesome but yeah i really want to get this audio driver working i wonder what that other folder is so under software that was this folder let's see what okay this is win 98 and me so this is probably the same thing i mean we got the same folder layout and everything so this is yeah so this is just that same driver for uh windows me or you know just windows 9x these are all okay so these are all like kind of bloatware and stuff that would come with the computer by default i guess because you got like norton internet security um i mean not all of it's bloatware but norton certainly is i don't know let's i mean it was weird how like we got this installed it was able to detect the audio driver maybe we should restart immediately okay well device manager just threw up but okay it's devmgmt.exe okay so that's why uh what we didn't launch before they don't use the msc extension for that but anyway we got a memory error that's awesome so okay we'll terminate that and we'll try to open it up again i mean i'm guessing that this setup executable I mean, we do have some cab files in here so it probably extracts stuff let's just try i'm kind of nervous to do this but let's try just to set it up again and then maybe restart the computer before going in and configuring the audio driver which in fact it might just do it automatically upon boot up okay we get that same midi inf file error but yeah, it never says that it like completing the installation, like we don't get that window, it just closes immediately. So, but anyway, we're going to restart the system here and then just see what happens. We'll see if it's able to automatically detect it upon boot up. If not, we'll go and manually configure it again. And hopefully the system will not just hang and render itself unbootable. All right, well, that's a good sign. So it wasn't just for merely installing the driver that caused that blue screen to come up. Doesn't look like it's coming up with a found new hardware wizard. Okay, do I want to open volume control? 
Okay, no active mixer device available. It's still using the PC speaker. So let's go uh, back into here. And actually, let me go into my computer and just see where it dumped all those files. So it should be program files, analog devices, sound max. Okay, so we have a manifest file in here. Yeah, I think there is a program that installs, because I've done this before, and I think it drops like a sound max audio control panel somewhere. So I'm, I'm guessing it didn't install properly. But if we go back into here and go to multimedia audio device, reinstall driver, and just install driver automatically. Last time it was able just to pick up that it was a SoundMax driver. It's installed it. So, okay, at this point, I'm just gonna restart. All right, we're still able to boot, that's awesome. Maybe that blue screen was just a fluke, and we did something to just corrupt the installation. I don't know. I am nervous to, oh, no, it just locked up. I guess we can just leave it here and see if it recovers, but I don't think it's going to. I mean, yeah, the keyboard, like, hitting caps lock, the light's not coming on, so it's definitely just locked up. And I have a feeling that if I force restart now, we'll get that same blue screen. So maybe this, uh, maybe this audio driver is just incompatible with React OS or something. It does not like it at all. Uh, but this is the proper driver. I mean, I have installed this before under Windows XP and it works totally fine with this hardware. And you saw that the network driver works, so at least we got that, and at least we have video. I could try to put a, another sound card in here, and I would still like to mess around with the display driver a little bit. Uh, I am just force powering off the system now, because uh, I would like to get the, um, the proper you know, Intel graphics adapter installed. But I guarantee you I'm gonna have to reinstall the system again, because I just have a feeling, oh, Maybe not, but it's probably just gonna do that same. Yep, just locked up again. Okay, well we can press F8 to get to, let's try regular safe mode and React OS. But we're still locked up. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> it's really still loading the audio driver and it's maybe it's not the fact that the driver's loaded, it's just that it's installed. That is, wow, that's obnoxious. Okay, yeah, the whole system's just locked up. Okay, so I was able to boot into safe mode with command prompt and that loaded up just fine. So we're gonna run devmgmt.exe, go into audio and uninstall this driver, and it's, oh my gosh, it's frozen again. Okay, what? <laughs> what? You know what, before I restart, let's see if it magically recovers. I'm gonna try last known good configuration. But yeah, installing this driver has turned this video into just an absolute uh, cluster. <laughs> I mean, really. Locked up again. Lovely. Okay, so just to recap what I've done here. I have tried to just let it recover on its own. I tried to go into safe mode. I tried to go into safe mode with command prompt to uninstall the driver before it froze on me there. Now I just tried last known good configuration and that didn't do anything either. It's still frozen up. So the last known good configuration is not actually a good configuration. Uh, I mean, it is because it boots up, but just immediately freezes. So I think I'm going to install React OS from scratch once again, find another sound card to put in here and uh, see if we can get that working. If not, we might just not have sound, which honestly at this point I might be okay with. All right, so we're back. I've got a Sound Blaster card installed and you can see uh, it did not recognize it. I mean, well, it recognized that there was a new card installed, but it wasn't able to get the driver for it. Uh, so I do have a couple of drivers on this CD right here, almost a DVD. And um, yeah, we're going to pop that in and see what we can do. Now, it looks like um, I opened up control panel and it just completely lagged and it's all... Oh, now it's detecting an input device. I wonder what that is. I didn't plug anything else in. Oh, you know what? It's probably... I mean, the Sound Blaster card has an input on it. Now, this disk has two drivers on it. One of them is an XP driver that I got directly from Sound Blaster or Creative. Uh, the second one is an old 98 slash me slash 2000 driver that I was able to find uh, on another website. So we're going to start with the XP one first and see, you know, what results that that gives us. And yeah, I don't know what's going on with control panel here. And also this, we're, we're just going to cancel out. This is not going to be able to find the proper driver for that. Yeah, all right, I guess we just have this window like perpetually opened up here. But anyway, we'll go into the drivers here and we'll run the XP one. 
So this is a self-extracting executable. This one here is already extracted, and I don't think, like if we go to audio here, are the drivers just in here? Um, oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, isn't there? Well, here's the setup wizard for the XP driver, so that's a good sign. Uh, no other applications are running, sure, okay to continue. Setup is unable to detect a supported product on your system. Uh, so, all right, that's not a good sign. All right, well, we'll go into the setup for the older driver. And this is the only uh, PCI sound card that I have. So if we don't get this working, I guess we're just not gonna have sound. Okay, custom installation, let's just see what we got. We really only need the drivers. Um, and you know what, I'm just gonna say that. There, there was that option back here, drivers only. That's not good. Got another memory could not be read error. And okay, it wants us to do the registration. We're not gonna bother with that. And sure, we'll restart, even though I don't think it installed properly. <laughs> and it froze up. Look at that. Oh, oh wait, okay, it, it was just turning off. <laughs> well, we're at the desktop, so that's good. Um, do I dare go to the sound control down here? Open volume control? It's still using the PC speaker, so yeah, we don't have, uh, we don't got nothing. Uh, okay, so let's open up Device Manager, or not, I want to go to Properties there, and see if we can just run through. Okay, well, we got two now because, you know, we've got the internal one. The only thing is, which one of these is, <laughs> which one of these is going to be the, well, PCI bus one, and this is uh, PCI bus zero. I'm guessing PCI bus one will be the, uh, or maybe it'll be the PCI bus zero. I'm thinking zero would be the internal one. One would be the PCI card. But whatever, let's start with this one, reinstall driver. Let's see if it's able to find it automatically like it did with the other one. I guess while this is going on, why don't we take a look at the themes that you could get for React OS or you know the ones that come with it. So you've seen the, um, whatever this theme is called, Mizu, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh look, installation failed, what a surprise. Uh, yeah, Mizu is Japanese for water. Um, I'm wondering if maybe they're going for like a watercolor thing maybe going on, I don't know. But uh, yeah, you got a light color scheme, that's the only variant. Then we've got, okay, we'll start with the classic theme. This is going to be just your, you know, old Windows, you know, 9X slash 2000 look and feel. Uh, so yeah, there. this is the like truest Windows theme that's on here. Where did the, oh yeah, I closed out of it, didn't I? No, here it is. Okay, so you got a whole bunch of variants too. So, you know, we can just briefly go through here. Uh, you know, we saw a lot of these on like Windows 95, Windows 98, even XP, you know, and then you could go into effects and advance and change all the stuff around if you want to. So you got that, then you've got um, Lotus or Latus, and this one only have one color scheme. It's a bit of a dark, like sleek looking theme here. Uh, some kind of futuristic, even Vista-esque, like Vista Basic-esque in the in a somewhat of a sense. So there you go. Here's what Windows look like. And yeah, so you got that. Then you have Lunar. This one looks pretty cool. So the title bars look a little bit bigger. The start menu seems to not change at all. So we've got the same exact design there. And yeah, here's a here's an explorer window. So, and then last one is modern. I think I'm gonna set it back to Mizu. Uh, we have a dark and a light version of this. So there you go. And this one's kind of bizarre because the active window title text is dark. So it's like dark on dark here. You see the inactive, you can read that totally fine, but when it becomes the active window, it just turns into like dark text on a dark background, which isn't really great. So yeah, we'll just set it back to, to Mizu here. And again, we only have the, the one color scheme. So those are your themes in React OS. And okay, so what we were doing, we were in device manager, let me go back to here. So this is either not the uh, PCI card that we installed, or it is and it wasn't able to get the driver for it. I'm thinking it's the latter, but let's try the second one anyways, and see if it's able to miraculously detect the uh, <laughs> the driver. Installation failed, what a surprise. Um, I wonder if we go back into my computer here. Let's just try the, like I wish it would tell you where it's extracting these files to. Maybe it, maybe it extracted it to the temp directory. That's not a percent sign.
No. Hmm. Nothing in there. I wonder if we run this in compatibility mode for XP. We don't have XP service pack 2, do we? Hmm. That is interesting. Because uh, I believe that's what this driver was written for. We'll try XP SP3. Yeah, like, I just I just wish that we just had, like, it has to do this self-extracting thing and install it. Just give me the freaking driver file so I can just install it manually. Like, but yeah, I think if this fails again, I'll just give up on audio. Because like I said, I don't have um, a, uh, you know, another card to put in here. Unable to detect the supported product. Yep, there you go. So... Yeah, uh, looks like we are not going to have audio working. Actually, I'm looking at the React OS wiki right now, and they did test seven sound cards with it. One of those was a SoundMax integrated digital audio, which this computer you saw earlier, it installs a SoundMax driver. And it says that it failed. It doesn't mention anything about the system hanging, but it says it causes a fault. It could be ignored in the debugger, and it's possible to shut down. Um, but yeah, so this is a, it's a different SoundMax, uh, driver than what I was trying to install, but, uh, there are a couple creative ones that work. This is not one of them. So yeah, we'll just give up on sound and we'll try to see if we can get the proper video driver. Cause again, we're just running this basic video driver here. In fact, I'm curious what it allows us to set the resolution to. Oh, we could go up to 1920 by 1440. So I've got the Intel drivers disk back in and we'll go into the video folder here and we will try to run. Okay, so I think, yeah, this one's for, I mean, there's a Windows 2000 folder here. There's a 9X folder in here. So let's try this one. And again, we have to run the setup executable. So we'll do that. Installing graphics driver, here's the moment of truth. Yes, I want to restart now, okay. This is going to be interesting. Will it hang? Will it give us some other problem that we've not experienced yet? Will it throw up a bunch of error messages? Will it blue screen? Okay, well, it's not blue screening when you select the React OS option from the boot menu. That's great. Oh, I spoke too soon. It blue screens when we try to start up. The video driver failed to initialize. Yay. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> now I wonder because the, the last known good configuration should actually work now because now it actually detected a problem. You know, it threw up a blue screen. Whereas before it was just hanging on startup. So we could try to boot into safe mode and uninstall the driver. I'm probably going to do that first. If that doesn't work, we'll try the last known good configuration. And I guess we could try the older driver version that's on there. That was for like Windows 9X and see if that works maybe. Um, but I have a feeling that that's not going to work either. So then we'll just have to use the base driver. Uh, that came with react OS, which means that we've basically spent all this. Oh, that even fails too on safe mode. Look at that. All right. Lovely. All right. Let's try last known good configuration. And that fails too. This wasn't the last known good configuration. What are you talking about? Maybe we can try. Okay. Safe mode with command prompt react OS debug. I might have to just reinstall this again. I mean, really? I <laughs> I mean, to be fair to React OS, it's not like they said any of this stuff was going to work. I mean, they do have a list of supported video cards and supported sound cards, and none of this stuff is on that list. So I'm just kind of throwing stuff at the wall here, uh, which is good because it's good to confirm that none of this hardware works currently with React OS, except for the network adapter, of course. But yeah, right now we're at a black screen, which is not a good sign, but I'll just sit here for a while and see if it does anything. All right, it's been a little bit and we are still on a black screen. So I'm going to, you're not gonna believe it, force restart once again. Okay, so before I completely give up on installing these drivers, I do wanna try one more thing and that is using a program called Snappy Driver Installer that was recommended on the React OS Wiki. Now, normally I just avoid these driver installation programs because a lot of them are just scams and scareware designed to get you to pay money to download free drivers. They say like, you got all these problems with your system and you gotta pay us to you know fix them and you know it, it's not anything so 
severe. Uh, so, you know, I just avoid those programs and I would never recommend them. But Snappy Driver Installer seems to be different. This is an open source project that's supported on Patreon. But what's interesting about it is there's actually two separate versions. You've got Snappy Driver Installer and Snappy Driver Installer Origin. And both of these programs have two separate versions. You've got like an on-demand downloader that just downloads the application itself. And then you get all the drivers you want from there. And then you've got the whole library of drivers drivers included with the program that's like 40 gigabytes in size and according to the react os wiki that's the version you have to get that works with react os now as far as the difference between the two snappy driver installer programs uh, I don't quite know the whole history here. I've seen some conflicting things online at, you know, what else is new. But uh, apparently, Snappy Driver Installer Origin was created by the person who originally created Snappy Driver Installer after a new group took over development of it. And a lot of people didn't really like the new group's direction. Apparently, there were, there were at least allegations of malware being in the program or the drivers that it downloaded or they downloaded it from some sketchy site, something like that. And pretty much everybody recommends snappy driver installer origin and as it turns out when i went to torrent snappy driver installer origin because to get the full version with all the driver packs you have to do it through a torrent there were like 60 people seeding the torrent where with snappy driver installer the non-origin one there was one person so snappy driver installer origin definitely seems to be the more popular one that's what i downloaded we're going to try it here and see if we get any different results. Now, I just put this on an external hard disk. We're gonna go into here, and I believe uh, we have to run, there's a batch file here. So we're gonna double click on this and uh, see what happens. All right, we already got some drivers showing up here, so that's awesome. Now, my theory in doing this is like with both of the sound drivers you tried to install, for example, we had to do that through installation wizards. We had to, you know, open those up. It would self extract all the files and then run you through the install process. And we encountered problems with both of those. So I'm thinking like maybe it didn't fully extract the drivers. Maybe something didn't install correctly. And if we just had the extracted driver files where I could go into device manager and manually say, okay, here's the drivers for this device, install them from here that might work for us. But I think Snappy Driver Installer does that automatically. Um, so we're going to grab, um, why don't we get both of, actually we've got three sound drivers here. We've got, oh, well this is the creative game port, yeah. So we're gonna grab this, we'll grab the Sound Blaster Live, we'll grab, this is the internal audio driver, and we'll get the graphics controller. This is the PCI network card that I don't care about because we're using the internal one. Now these down here, are installed drivers but there's apparently an updated one available we're not going to mess with any of these and we're not going to mess with these that don't even have a driver in the driver pack we're just going to get these four we'll hit install and interestingly enough it's actually recognizing the system as windows xp 64 32 bit and yeah if this doesn't work for us like let's hope the system doesn't hang here or blue screen or something else that hasn't happened yet uh but if we don't get any good results here uh, we're just going to move on with what we've got. You know, we'll use the basic display driver. We will try to play the few games I'm going to test without audio, which would suck. Oh, and speaking of hanging, I think that the program just hung here. Uh, it's not saying it's not responding, but you see we've got the hand cursor. I can't click on this to expand it. And let's open up Task Manager and just see. Yep, it is not responding. Isn't that lovely? And now that I have minimized the window, it's not going to show up when I <laughs> when I try to restore it again. So we're just going to let the system sit here for a while, and hopefully it will recover. All right, well, long story short, that didn't work. The system actually hung up, and then I had to force restart again. So let's just try it one more time. I have an idea of trying to run it in compatibility mode. Now, this bat file here, from what I can tell, just decides which version, the 32-bit or the 64-bit one, to run, depending on your processor architecture. So we're just going to right-click on the 32-bit one here and go to compatibility, run it in compatibility mode for XP Service Pack 3 and we'll run it. We'll accept the license terms again. So now it actually just says Windows XP 32-bit. I wonder if the fact that it was saying Windows XP 64-bit last time, maybe it thought the processor was a 64-bit machine. 
and that might have factored into the issue. And I guess we'll just grab all of these. I'm not even going to bother getting the game port, though. We don't really need that at all. Let's install those three. It installed the Sound Blaster Live one. Okay, that's awesome. So the program is not frozen up here. Oh my gosh, look at <laughs> look at all that. I guess these are additional drivers that you can get. Um, I think it I think it just froze. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. Like I should just let it do its thing. So I am curious if we go into Device Manager. Oh, I'm doing MSC again. I'm so. I'm so used to doing that and okay oh that's the <laughs> yeah the window like yeah it's it's doing the whole painting window thing devmgmt.exe and yeah there we go so now we have this installed now it says react os can't load it it may be corrupted or missing um that could just be because we have to restart it looks like snappy driver installer has frozen again I don't even think I'm going to let it recover because it did not recover last time and the system just eventually froze. So we're just going to end task and then we will uh, restart the system. And if we get a blue screen, uh, well, that's going to suck. I realized a little while ago that, you know, just like the Windows XP installation disk, React OS's install media does have a repair function where you can go in and try to repair the operating system. And I believe in there is where you can roll back a driver. So that's something we could have done before. But I mean, just reinstalling the OS works too. It's not like I needed to save any data on here. But we could try that just for the heck of it if we end up getting a blue screen here. So here's the moment of truth. All right, no blue screen there. It was the video driver that blue screened after the boot screen. Hey, look at that. All right. Is it going to lock up? It's not? Hold on a second. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it's still using the PC speaker. Open volume control. Oh, I want to adjust audio properties. It is showing the creative sound blaster live okay that's interesting yeah where did audio devices go we've got you know multimedia audio device under here but this is the internal one it shows up in here no drivers are installed for this device and i was right pci bus one is the pci card so i don't know why it's not showing up in device manager oh it's disabled that's why okay well let's enable it React OS cannot load the device driver. It's missing for this hardware. Okay, so that was not because we had to restart. Um, that is just straight up. It's not working. All right. So now we should be able to, now that we've enabled it, we can go to device manager and it should. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So we'll just uninstall that from our system. Let's go back into, I'm, I'm looking for like an executable on the desktop. I know it's in my computer, uh, local disk E and we'll run this again the compatibility mode should still be applied which it is and i'm just going to get one driver because i think installing multiple drivers or at least you know messing around with the program like expanding that list that we did last time may have caused it to hang up i don't know oh the whole oh my gosh the whole system hung up again what the heck all right it's forced restart time okay okay it worked that time I guess we'll try the internal audio one next. System restart required. Okay, let's go ahead and restart. We'll just do this one by one. All right, we're at the desktop. Taskbar and icons are loading up, so that's great. And I do not have the audio cable plugged in at the moment. And I'm probably not going to swap it because uh, we get the same error message that we did before. And if we go into not help and support, and oh, look at that, Wine Internet Explorer has frozen. What a surprise. Um, let's go in here to Device Manager again. Once again, it's disabled the driver, so we gotta go here, just Audio Properties, Hardware, Properties, Enable this. It says there are no drivers installed for the device, apparently. Cannot load driver for this hardware, the driver may be corrupted or missing, so. What happens if we do update driver, install driver automatically? Installation completes. I don't think it changed anything. In fact, we can't even change it to be enabled because when you go back in, it just has it set to disabled again. Last but not least, let's uh, try the video driver. All right, well, long story short, 
it didn't work. Uh, you see in device manager here, we are still with that basic VGA compatible graphics card driver. So yeah, none of those drivers installed and worked properly, which again, you know, to be fair to React OS, none of this stuff was on the officially supported list. So yeah, I mean, there you go. I would imagine Snappy Driver Installer would work better if it had hardware, or if it was downloading drivers for hardware that was supported with React OS. Uh, so yeah, we're going to install some Windows applications in a moment, but I figured before we do that, we'd try out the built-in applications manager that React OS has here. And this is just a database, kind of like a package manager that you'd see on Linux of just a whole bunch of software that you can download and use with React OS. So we've got 7-Zip, you know, Adobe Air I saw in there. I think I just saw Chromium, uh, Chromium XP. So why don't we go to, I don't know, Games and Fun? We've got Extreme Tux Racer. Yeah, why don't we grab that? Under Internet and Network, we've got... I actually want to see, do they have Supermium in here? It's not in here. My pal is, though. So... We'll grab my pal maybe. Yeah, why don't we just why don't we just get those? Okay, and my pal here came up with a setup wizard we have to go through. So we'll just go with standard. Sure, we'll use it as the default browser and we'll let it install. So yeah, I mean it's nice. You just got a whole bunch of software that I would imagine all of this has been confirmed to work with React OS, which is, you know, great. Now, the Extreme Tux Racer program did install, it didn't come up with a wizard that we had to go through. So, I mean, it does depend on what, you know, stuff that you download here, if that's going to happen or not. But we'll launch MyPal, and yeah, we'll just close out of this. We'll try out both of these programs, uh, see if that game can, you know, run on here. So, there we go. Yeah, it's it's a web browser. Uh, let's go into programs here and see uh, under games, maybe? No? Huh. Oh, you know, it did ask me to extract contents of a folder somewhere i think i chose in my downloads um let's see administrator my documents yeah this right here so this is all the stuff that the applications manager downloads so this i think did yeah it did run the self extractor so let's try to run the executable here i guess i believe i played this before on this channel in another video but you can see the menu. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the menu is even lagging here. This is going to be rough if we can even get to... <laughs> okay, can we use the keyboard? Uh, we'll just hit enter, assuming we can do that. Yeah, we can. All right. I wish there was a frame rate counter. You know, there might be in this program, but I mean, I'm not going to go through the hassle of trying to enable it. I mean, holy cow, if the menu lags that badly. <laughs> but yeah, this is... This is unplayable. Like, there's no, I mean, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's Tux Racer, and that is uh, definitely not a good sign of what's to come because I've got some other games that we're going to try, but just for the heck of it, let's try them anyway. Oh, and also a copy of Microsoft Front Page. All right, so it started up at least. That's a good sign. And we'll just leave username as Michael, not bother putting in anything else. We'll accept. Typical install. That's fine. And we'll install. All right, it's finished, though the setup wizard here has kind of glitched out a little bit and brought the some of the contents of the file browser into it. But okay, we'll hit finish. And if we go into our programs here, we should see there it is from page 2003. Let's see if it starts on up. And yes, it does. Okay, well, the title bar for a second just had two boxes and a question mark in place of the application name, but it fixed that. Um, oh, do we got to activate really? Okay, at least we can get past that for, or can we? Can we Can we not type in here? Oh, look, the whole program froze up. That's lovely. React OS is in alpha. That's what I keep telling myself. Well, it isn't not responding, but we'll get out of that and just try to launch it again. I'm wondering if you, like, have to activate it. What the heck? Why is that? Well, I cannot type in here, and I also apparently can't, click on the menus uh i can move the oh my gosh i can create copies of the menu items all right that's certainly interesting but yeah none of the i mean i can i can drag them off the <laughs> okay i've never done this in microsoft office before 
like just drag these menu items around and it makes clones of itself. But yeah, we can't type in here. That could be because of activation. I know in certain Microsoft Office releases, uh, you would have to, like, you would start typing. Normally, though, it comes up with a message after you start typing. It'll say, like, hey, you have to activate. But, I mean, the program opened. We just can't really, you know, uh, use it. Why don't we try to run it in compatibility mode? And we'll just go to properties, compatibility, and we'll do XPSP3 and see if that changes anything. If not, we'll try Windows 2000. Oh, it's going to keep our lovely file menu layout there. All right, so it comes up with the activation thing. We'll just say cancel. And then there we go. Okay, so that that worked. Now we can start typing. So let's just maybe write out uh, hello world and change this up to size seven there, 36 point. And I don't know, we want to maybe bold underline it i i did a whole video on microsoft front page 98 back a couple years ago that was actually that was back in 2022 man that was a couple years ago uh yeah time is weird uh anyway so it looks like okay well task manager is causing issues or maybe the whole program did, did this thing freeze up again come on come on can i can i at least save this please it, what's interesting is it hasn't gone into a not responding state. It still says it's running. But yeah, it just completely like locks up. All right. Well, I mean, we still have the start menu and everything responding, but task manager is not. Uh, can we can we log off? Okay, let's just do that. We'll just log off and log back on. Okay, so we'll try front page one more time here. And let's just quickly write... Hello world, I don't want to register. Hello world, make that bold, underline, italicized. Uh, this is so cool. And okay, so, oh, and now the, yeah, now the menus work, look at that. So, yeah, I don't, like, that's not a normal thing, right? You can't just drag the freaking menu items around. So, <laughs> like, I don't know how I was able to do that, but... That is hilarious because yeah, you see now I can't now now I can't do it. Um, we can move like the the bar around like the whole menu bar. We can move that to another location if we want to. But uh, yeah, so okay, we'll just save this. Why not save as my websites index.htm. So we'll open that up and there's our HTML document. So yeah, one Internet Explorer. That's the you know, Internet Explorer clone of sorts that's on here. So we've got that. And of course, we are on the internet. So we could go to, you know, the old net.com as we always seem to do. And there it is. So yeah, we're all online. We got front page at least somewhat working. That whole file menu thing was hilarious. And yeah, okay. So now we're going to get into the games. I'm actually really curious to see how these run, especially with this basic video driver. We're going to start with uh, Microsoft Revenge of Arcade. Now, just to show you, React OS does include some games. You've got Solitaire, Spider Solitaire, and Wine Mine. So, you know, these are going to be very, very Windows card game-esque. So we'll open up Spider Solitaire just so you can see that. Uh, of course, you know, it's a little bit of a different layout. These are not exactly the same programs or anything. So there you go. And we'll try Wine Mine. So there's that. So you got three games on here. Not bad. Not bad at all. But we're about to give it a whole lot more. So Microsoft Revenge of Arcade. Uh, this includes a bunch of arcade games. You would have never guessed that, I'm sure. Of course, these games are going to kind of uh, be missing like an entire aspect of them. The fact that we don't have sound. But we'll just run through the installation and see if we can even uh, get them installed and, and, you know, if they work. I think I've mentioned it before, but this is such a bizarre layout for a setup wizard. I mean, I know they're trying to go for like, oh, look, it's the like arcade, you know, buttons and all that. But it's like just, okay, where is install? There it is. Okay. Uh, yes, we want to set up to create the folder. Does it make a Microsoft Games Revenge of Arcade? Yeah, so we can launch them right from here, but we can also just, you know, do it from this launcher. So let's just do Miss Pac-Man. So I believe we hit F2 to insert a coin, F3 to start, and here we are. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to spend uh, a whole lot of time here because I do want to check out the other games, but... We got it working. We got the games installed. So that is that is a success. So you've got a little collection of arcade games that work on React OS. 
And now let's try uh, SimCity 2000. We'll save Half-Life for last. So we'll hop back into my computer. Fun fact about me, the only SimCity game that I ever played uh, was SimCity 3000. I never actually sat down and played 2000. I guess autorun.exe. We will proceed. How would I like to proceed? I want to install it. Okay. Oh no, trying to load Win95 setup.exe. Wow, 16 applications are not supported internally by NTVDM at the moment. Yeah, that's the NT virtual DOS machine screwing up. That's lovely. Uh, I guess we could, let's try compatibility, set it to Windows 95. Yeah, I mean, this just has to do with the fact that the application is 16-bit. Apparently, they're not supported internally by NTVDM at this moment. So, compatibility mode wouldn't change anything. And what is IP.exe? Info Pro. All right, can't open a registry. Can't find specified path in registry. Maybe it's corrupted. Oh, no. So yeah, we cannot install SimCity 2000. It doesn't necessarily mean we won't be able to run it because, you know, the installer is a 16-bit application, but there are versions of SimCity 2000 that are 32-bit only. Uh, this is just not one of those versions. So, uh, you know, if I had one of those versions, we might be able to get that running on here properly. Um, but we are going to move on to Half-Life, which we hopefully will get some better results with. Let's just run setup.exe. Oh no, the setup executable is 16-bit, really? Oh no, that's interesting. Um, clicking on install Half-Life for some reason brings up readme.txt, that's okay. What? Why? <laughs> clicking on... Are, are these options out of order? Oh, I, I think they are. Because this top one here, yeah, I think install is usually at the very top. Why is this out of order? Because this is running the install executable. That, okay, that's just bizarre. Yeah, because hitting install opens up readme.txt, play Half-Life, just quits, or visit the Half-Life website. Yeah, these are th these are out of order. So, that, <laughs> okay. Um, well, fortunately, I do have a copy of Half-Life with the no CD crack that's like already installed just in a folder. So I'm going to copy that over to here because Half-Life is a 32-bit application. So it should be able to run on here fine, at least, you know, if it's able to run. All right. So we got that disk in the drive. We're going to open it up. I'm just going to copy all these files over to the hard disk. Let's call this HL and just uh, do a control A, control C, control V. So, will it run? That is the question. Let's see. Please type the Half-Life CD key. Okay, good sign. Also, okay, create game and join game. Like, these, these labels are being all screwed up. That's not what, <laughs> that's not what it's supposed to say. All right, we got the Sierra logo. That's cool. Um, we still have the you still have the taskbar. I cannot hit escape, but I think the first time you run this, I think it doesn't allow you to skip the intro movies. Maybe, hopefully that's the case. I also cannot alt tab out of this. So, uh, oh my gosh, the PC speaker is going crazy. <laughs> okay, it stopped, but yeah, the labels are all messed up. Look at this. 3D info site previews, visit one, update, add server, console, hazard course, and disconnect. Like <laughs> Okay, um, let's start a new game and let's uh, view game info to play it on the medium setting. Now, is it going to actually start? That's the question. Okay, well, we've been sitting on this loading screen for a few minutes here and yeah, I think it just froze. We, okay, we can alt tab now at least. Oh, and that's lovely. We've got, oh, look, we can paint on the desktop so we can write, I don't know, hi, if I can. Okay, well, now we can't. Yeah, so at least the system didn't lock up, but I don't think Half-Life is going to is going to get past the loading screen. Now, we can of course go in and change all the video settings. So, I'm going to I'm I'm just going to quit the process. And oh no, it okay. Well, it blue screened. All right, once again, it's been a little while on the loading screen and we are getting nowhere. So, uh, what have we learned? Well, React OS is definitely not a gaming platform. Uh, it's certainly not a replacement for Windows in its current state. It's not even close. 
But, you know, it is cool for what it is. I mean, the fact that this has been in continued development since 1996 is commendable on its own. Uh, these people and, you know, all these volunteers, again, this is a mostly volunteer project. Uh, you know, they're still committed to this. They still are, you know, putting out updates for it every so often. And yeah, we did experience a bunch of issues today, but uh, all the hardware, you know, the video card, the audio driver, all that stuff was not on the officially supported hardware list. So if you wanted to use React OS, I would recommend doing so in a virtual machine or looking over that list and seeing, you know, what hardware that it's been tested with and, you know, try to source some of that hardware. But this is just a very niche project. You know, there, it, it takes a very specific kind of person to uh, fire this up and, you know, install it on a, you know, secondary computer. This is definitely not like main computer material by any means. And it probably will be a very long time if it even ever gets to that point. But, you know, to put on a secondary computer just to mess around with, if you've got like an old XP era machine that you don't, you're not really doing anything with and just want to have fun with it. Yeah, I mean, definitely be prepared to get frustrated with drivers and all that stuff but you know it is pretty neat and yeah that's a little look at how react os is doing in 2024 so uh, if you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see more like it definitely be sure to uh, give this one a thumbs up get subscribed maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else but either way i just want to thank you all so much for watching and as always i will see you in the next video